In addition to the orange fluorescence from the bacteria on the tongue, quite distinct melanin pigmentation of the papilla can be seen here. As we might expect, the melanin pigmented papilla also appear dark in white light. The oral environment is naturally subject to various forms of irritation and resulting inflammation. Certain areas of the mouth are more prone to this than others, in particular, lateral border and tip of the tongue, buccal mucosa, adjacent to the occlusal surface, and hard palate. Blood vessel dilation associated with inflammation results in a higher blood content in the tissue. Other inflammatory components also affect the local tissue architecture and composition, resulting in a changed fluorescence pattern. The net result is a darkened area at the inflamed site due to the increased absorption of light by the blood. It's quite common for the lateral border and tip of the tongue to be inflamed due to chronic irritation from teeth and thus appear darker under velscope. Larger dark spots can sometimes be seen on the dorsal surface of the tongue. This is likely due to the patchy wearing down of the filiform papilla from use of the tongue. The result is a dark patch due to the loss of keratin fluorescence from the filiform papilla. Of course, everybody is different, and what we have just seen isn't always the case. The corresponding areas on these tongues are comparatively bright. The appearance of the tongue will depend on oral habits and the structure of the mouth. The buccal mucosa is quite often an area of chronic irritation and mild inflammation. Here we see a fairly classic presentation of linea alba under velscope. Under white light, you can often see a white line corresponding to keratinized tissue right along the bite line. This can sometimes show up as a bright line under velscope due to the keratin fluorescence, but more typically appears as you see here with the associated mild inflammation dominating and showing the area as predominantly dark. Keratin fluorescence can be seen as light bright spots along the bite line. Notice the diffuse borders of the inflamed region as it fades away into the brighter green of the rest of the buccal mucosa. This is typical of inflammation. Chronic irritation of the buccal mucosa from the teeth has, in this case, led to two pronounced dark patches rather than a line. Still, the principle is the same. Again, notice the diffuse borders of the dark inflamed areas under velscope. This is an example of inflammation on the hard palate quite a common area for irritation and local trauma. In this case, the dark areas under velscope correspond to the irritated and sore-looking areas under white light. The patient had been sucking on hard candies before coming to the dentist. As we move on to considering genuinely abnormal mucosa, we should remind ourselves of some general principles. Evaluation of a suspicious area should generally be made in comparison to the contralateral side. Areas that show an irregularly shaped but relatively well delineated reduction of normal green fluorescence compared to surrounding tissue of the same type and to the equivalent location on the contralateral side should be watched carefully. This is a very simple example of bilateral presentation. The dark area on the right hand side of the mouth has an equivalent dark area on the left hand side. Of course, we have already discussed that the anterior tonsillar pillars typically appear dark under velscope. But even if you didn't know this, the contralateral symmetry is generally a good sign that this is not a manifestation of disease. Using an instrument to blanch a dark area under velscope can be a useful technique for indicating whether or not an abnormality has an inflammatory component. This particular area blanches completely. Treatment and subsequent follow-up after two weeks resulted in complete resolution. The fact that tissue does not blanch is not necessarily a bad sign. Here is an example of some dark areas on the side of the tongue that did not blanch. It turned out that this particular abnormality was an ecchymosis, a type of soft tissue hemorrhage. When the patient showed up for the standard two-week follow-up visit, the situation had resolved and the dark areas were gone. It should not be surprising that we might have trouble trying to blanch an ecchymosis if we stop to remember that for a soft tissue hemorrhage, there has been vessel damage and blood has spilled out into the surrounding connective tissue. This makes it more difficult to blanch because the blood is no longer inside the blood vessels. The dilated blood vessels that occur as a result of inflammation can easily be blanched because the blood is still inside the blood vessels. Here are some important things to remember about blanching. Blanching can indicate that an abnormality has an inflammatory component. 
Soft tissue hemorrhages, such as an ecchymosis, may not blanch. Although we might expect a precancerous or cancerous lesion not to blanch because of the associated intrinsic loss of fluorescence, as explained earlier, we must remember that cancerous or precancerous lesions typically have associated inflammation. Therefore, they may partially blanch. However, the bottom line is that not only should an abnormality that does not completely blanch under Velsco be carefully followed so as to determine its cause and or rule out dysplasia or oral cancer, but also an abnormality that does not completely blanch but persists is of equal concern. Here is an example of so-called white hairy tongue. The extra-long keratinized filiform papilla show up very brightly under Velscope, as we would expect. These inflamed salivary glands on the hard palate of this patient show up as little dark patches under Velscope, as we would expect from our discussion on inflammation. The other theme in evidence here is to look carefully at the hard palate under white light again, after observing it under Velscope. The inflammation is also quite apparent there. This is another example of an ecchymosis showing up dark under Velscope because of the localized blood which did not blanch. As in the earlier example, this lesion was gone at the two-week follow-up visit. Here is an example of permanent dilation of the vascular bed. This is a benign permanent condition that nevertheless should be monitored for change. This is an amalgam tattoo which shows up as dark in white light, just as it shows up as dark under Velscope, due to light absorption. The presence of filled teeth nearby would help confirm the identification of this particular lesion as an amalgam tattoo. The classic appearance of these Fordyce granules under white light and their corresponding appearance under Velscope make them fairly straightforward to identify. Fibromas are composed mainly of connective tissue with little vascularity and thus appear neutral or slightly brighter under Velscope. This is an example of erosive lichen planus and not surprisingly, the inflammation around the central ulceration shows up as dark under Velscope. Notice also that the keratinized tissue and central fibrin clot show up brighter compared to the surrounding inflammation. Our first example of dysplasia is an interesting one, where the larger, more obvious area in white light was confirmed by biopsy to be mild dysplasia. The smaller, less obvious area under white light, which looks darker with more well-delineated borders under Velscope, was found by biopsy to be moderate to severe dysplasia. This is an example of a large area of leukoplakia on the soft palate that was confirmed by biopsy to be moderate dysplasia. Under Velscope, the leukoplakia presents as a dark area, in stark contrast to the adjacent healthy tissue on the soft palate. Notice in particular the well-delineated and irregular border of the dark region. This is typical of dysplasia and oral cancer. This is an area of leukoplakia that showed up predominantly dark under Velscope. Notice the irregular and well-delineated border. This area was biopsy confirmed as severe dysplasia. A large area of leukoplakia on the side of the tongue. Under Velscope, parts of this area showed up as brighter due to keratin fluorescence, but the areas indicated on the picture by the arrows are to varying degrees darker under Velscope. Notice the general theme here of the irregular and well-delineated borders, and increasing darkness being associated with more advanced stages of dysplasia and oral cancer. The slightly less dark area on the right-hand side of the image was found to be moderate dysplasia. The smaller, darker area more toward the top of the tongue, severe dysplasia. And the very dark area posterior to these two areas, invasive squamous cell carcinoma. The area that stands out under white light was found to be mild dysplasia. Interestingly, the area to the right that was not obvious in white light shows up as a dark area with quite well delineated borders. This area was biopsy confirmed to be carcinoma in situ. A classic clinically occult lesion is seen here as a well delineated dark area when viewed under Velscope. A biopsy from this area showed carcinoma in situ. A rather remarkable image showing invasive squamous cell carcinoma with a secondary infection. Not surprisingly, the bacteria involved in the infection give off their characteristic orange-red glow from the porphyrin fluorescence. 
The dark area at the top is a previous biopsy site. Velscope is an adjunctive device. Combine the information from what you see under Velscope with your white light visual and tactile exam. A comprehensive patient history can be the key to helping you understand what you see with Velscope or with any other tool for that matter. Review some of the many resources available on the basics of oral cancer. Knowing where it is most likely to occur, for example, can be very helpful in deciding how to follow up on a patient. Recognize normal and abnormal patterns of fluorescence. Your brain is good at pattern recognition. Beware of a unilateral presentation as opposed to a bilateral one. This can help you decide what doesn't belong. Be especially careful about a non-symmetrical lesion with an irregular and or well-delineated border. This could be a danger sign. Excess blood in the tissue will nearly always look dark under Velscope. Try to use the underlying principles you've learned here to understand what you see with Velscope and how it relates to what you see under white light. You and your experiences are your own best teacher. As always, use your clinical judgment and common sense.